afternoon and welcome to another 34 degree day here in the uh, southwest of France. I think we've got uh, about another three or four of these days and uh, apparently you're going to get some of that in, uh, in London as well, aren't you? Uh, I think the whole of, uh, whole of Europe is going to get a bit of a, an extra boost of summer uh, for a few days. So uh, yeah, should really make the most of it, shouldn't we? Um, so what I thought I'd do, seems this is my 500th video and um, I can't believe I've made 500 videos. I can't believe I've edited and uploaded 500 videos um, in 550 days, which is, um, I think it's a bit of a feat, even though they're not top quality, not even good quality. <laughs> I'm still quite proud of myself for doing it. I've stuck with it. Um, yeah, what I thought I'd do is I've just been um, I've just been looking at this wall, um, which is the workshop wall, which is the inside wall of that blue wall I showed you the other day with uh, the issues. Um, yeah, I've just been having a look in the workshop actually, and uh, I thought I'd give you a little bit of a background as to what happened last year. Um, not that it's directly linked to what has gone on recently or what is going on now, um, but it was quite an interesting part of my um, project uh, and one of the problems that just happened um, to the house and to me um, due to bad weather really had um, three or four or maybe five days of really heavy rain last summer in June time uh, a lot of you guys out there will know this story and would have watched it as it happened um, yeah, it was a bit like a soap opera and uh, it kind of tried to ruin my life. It didn't because um, I'm pretty chilled and uh, as I said at the time that the house is 150 years old and had lived through all sorts of weathers and wars and all sorts and uh, re remained standing. So I never really had any worries about it falling down uh, as much as there's plenty of cracks in the walls. So yeah, just give you a quick look um, at the wall in question. And I've just noticed something, believe it or not, I noticed something about 10 minutes ago uh, which kind of lines up exactly with the problems that I'm having. Um, there's the uh, window, which you see from the living room. And if you look closely, you can see in there and you'll see a mirror, which is reflecting my painting on the wall. Um, yes, I've just found, just spotted literally 10 minutes ago, a large patch. Can you see that down there? Now this is lime render and is porous. And that there, can't believe it, I can't believe I've just spotted it, is about two or three foot off the ground and it looks to be about three or four foot wide. Um, and that's sand and cement. So someone in their wisdom, I've only, literally, seriously, only just spotted this. Someone in their wisdom has tried to do some kind of render repair of this wall, this stone wall, with cement, which you know, I'm becoming a bit of a, a bit of an expert in this, and I'm not. Uh, but I am learning more about it. And cement is the worst thing to put on these stone walls. Um, yeah, uh, cement is impervious and will trap moisture in that wall. And what problems have I got going on in that wall? Yeah, the paint's peeling off because there's moisture trapped in it. God, I can't believe it. So I've kind of come to the conclusion um that i may be able to get away with i may not this is just a guess that if i can let one side of the wall breathe 100 percent, any problems that i've i've caused on the other side of the wall um you know i might get a little bit of credit do you know what i mean because air, uh, moisture could still come out through one side of the wall so yeah and I, I will eventually take all that paint off i'm not in a tearing hurry to do it i'm probably more in a tearing hurry to chip off that sand and cement now I've just found it I don't know why it would have been repaired with that I can only assume it was done by a budget builder so this wall uh, is about I guess it must be 25 foot long it's as long as the house is wide obviously um, and in there see I was just looking as I say I was just looking there's a piece of timber so there's this mezzanine floor that was kind of put in with this little room I call it the dungeon at the back um, which that has appeared in other videos and one of those timbers has been rendered around so the wood was there before this render so this wall has been repaired at some point in the last 150 years and um, but they didn't render it's very dark in there they didn't render inside the dungeon now all of that needs to be repointed now in the very far corner of the dungeon is that corner of the bedroom where that cracks appeared 
um, and continues to appear. So yeah, it's all detective work. It's good fun, really. I quite, I quite enjoy the detective work of um, finding out a bit of history of the building. It kind of tells you what it's been up to. So right, yeah, last summer, I had an issue where it rained and rained and rained and rained and rained and eventually the workshop floor flooded after I don't know fourth or fifth storm or something and yeah a bit of a calamity now all of the videos all of the videos I've put on a playlist um, called something like roof and drainage something like that I'll put a link to it um, at the end of the video I'll put a uh, I'll put a link to the uh, to the playlist uh, so you can go and check it all out as it happened uh, but basically yeah the uh, workshop flooded and I assumed it was a leaking roof and I actually did get up on the roof and found a little leak there's a couple of fiberglass a couple of fiberglass windows uh, in the in the in the roof can't really see them from here I'm not tall enough um, and yeah they were they were leaking a little bit but nowhere near enough to um, allow that much water, the amount of water that was in the workshop, just nowhere near enough. So, right, what I discovered was this uh, gutter downpipe, this gutter filled up and it filled up to the brim and it just overflowed. Now that told me that there was a problem with the drainage with this downpipe. So I had to, uh, yeah, go on a, a bit of a, a digging expedition and uh, yeah, I, uh, I dug and I dug and basically I was trying to look to see why that, why that downpipe was blocked and it turned out there was a cast iron section just like there's a cast iron section there uh, behind that milk uh, churn. Is this called a churn? Um, and there was one at the bottom of this downpipe and at the bottom of that downpipe i thought well there was some drainage and uh, it turns out there was no drainage there was a couple of roof tiles which had just been put on top of each other and they went nowhere they didn't even provide a channel for any water to go anywhere it just sort of ended up in like a muddy mess down here um, so yeah I kind of uh, at the time I was asking my subscribers what on earth am I going to do I knew I was going to have to put some sort of drainage in because at the time there was no downpipes on the front of the house so all of the rain came down the gutters and came down mainly this downpipe and then I found a concrete pipe that went to the same spot and then it just stopped and there was nothing there other than soil um, yeah it was an absolute nightmare and I kind of did have a, a couple of sleepless nights so I just started digging and digging and then I found a strange pipe down here and didn't know what it was uh, assumed I stuck a tape measure down it a 26 foot long tape measure down it and it went down in this direction roughly and uh, you're not going to be able to see on the camera but there is a lump that runs across the um, across the lawn there and down the middle of this flower bed. Um, so what I ended up doing is, after a bit of umming and ahhing, decided that, well, if that's tw at least 26 foot long, that pipe, concrete pipe, about six or eight inches in diameter, I assumed that that went to some kind of well or some kind of drain or soak away or something. So I just put some simple plumbing and, uh, or simple drainage, I should say, um, linking that down pipe there uh, through in through the concrete pipe the concrete sections into a little inspection chamber which sits underneath that um, pot and under that slab and I joined it up um, into into this drain situation so yeah I did have a few comments regarding the situation with the wall um, yeah you need to dig French French drains you need to do this that and the other well if you look back on that playlist you can actually see what I did do and what I decided to do to get what I worked out that was rainwater was basically collecting here total disaster uh, and it eventually just found its way under the wall and back into the workshop um, because the ground level on the outside was higher than the ground level on the inside so yeah 
rainwater just found its way under that wall. So what I dug, uh, what I did was dug a channel all the way along this wall and uh, just dug it down so it was lower than the uh, ground level of the inside of the workshop. And it's kind of worked out okay. But what I discovered here, where I've put some grass, is that this area here was full of roof tiles. And what had happened around 1999, this house had had a new roof put on it about the same time that the little extension was built. Uh, I'll talk about the extension again in another video because something occurred to me yesterday. Um, but yeah, the extension was built and it had a new, nice new roof put on in around 1999. And what they did, it seems to me, what the builders did, is took all the, the old roof off and just dumped it on the ground. <laughs> so the ground level here, and obviously over time it had collected soil, because uh, you know leaves falling on top of all the broken tiles formed soil over say 20 years. Uh, and this was like, you know, eight or nine inches higher because of all the broken tiles. So I took all the broken tiles out, raked it flat. I dug a channel, uh, channel down the side of the wall, about 10 inches deep, something like that. I cleaned all, the, cleaned all the old tiles up, the broken tiles that I took out, cleaned them all up, washed them all, and then I smashed them to bits and I'm, I turned them into gravel. And it's worked a treat. And I've created something a bit like a, um, you could say a French drain or a soak away. Um, and the, the roof tiles, which are obviously red, uh, are pretty much level with the ground level, level with the lawn. Uh, and these are just some granite stones, which I'd had um, I actually had them over here before I um, put the slabs down uh, and uh, built that shelter. So uh, yeah, a little bit of background as to what happened here and touch wood, it's all working perfectly. Uh, I, put new, I put new guttering downpipes, which you may just be able to see on the corner of the house, just there. Um, yeah, there's videos of me doing that as well. Uh, and I put one on both sides of the house because there was no drainage on the front of the house at all. And this roof is pretty big, even though it's only a small house, it's a bungalow. So the roof is pretty big. So all the drainage outside is now as close to perfect as I can get it. I don't tend to aim for perfection, but I did a good job considering it was my first ever go. So from a rainwater point of view, there are no problems whatsoever. Now the situation I've got now is, uh, admittedly I've just found that cement, which is definitely, definitely causing me problems, is that this wall sits directly, this was the old exterior wall before this workshop was built, um, sits directly on the ground, on soil. There's no footing and there is no damp proof course. You wouldn't expect a damp proof course in a house this, this old. Um, and here is uh, what a damp proof, this is deep, called DPM, and it's just a plastic strip. And what you do is that you'd lay that in between a course of bricks down by the ground, you know, maybe a foot off the ground, uh, and that would stop moisture coming up from the ground through the brickwork and uh, yeah, traveling up the wall. But obviously there is no, there is no plastic membrane in this wall, obviously, because it wasn't around 150 years ago. So the way to combat that is to allow water to come up. Yes, someone did correct me. It is called rising damp. That's got a bit of a negative connotation, isn't it? The phrase rising damp. Uh, so moisture comes up through the wall and then you let, let it evaporate. That's, that's the technology behind these houses, is that you must let that evaporate and wick away that water, that moisture. So when I think about moisture coming up from the ground, yes, it's called rising damp, but it's not damp, it's, uh, it's rising moisture or rising water vapor, but damp, I always class damp as being wet. Do you know what I mean? Like a damp cloth, it's wet. Um, but these walls aren't wet to the touch. So there is, even though there's moisture coming up, I know it's semantics, but it does make a difference when you're explaining to someone, someone says, oh, you've got rising damp. Well, no, yeah, there is moisture, but it's not rising damp. Do you see what I mean? So I did see a video yesterday or the day before, and I've got to, <laughs> I've got to, I'll show you a little clip. Now, this is, I'm not gonna call it a scam because I, I don't know enough about this system or product to call it a scab because there's gonna be people watching. Oh, I had that done and it's brilliant. 
No, okay, did you? If anyone can explain to me how uh, this works. So basically, a guy drills some holes in a wall um, and puts some plastic rods in these holes and then calls that a damp proof membrane. Now, to me, that looks like filling some holes in a colander because unless you have a permanent, a complete membrane, <laughs> complete surface, stopping moisture from coming up, then it's pointless, isn't it? Do you know what I mean? It's like, as I say, blocking holes in a colander. So yeah, this strikes me as being iffy to say the least. Um, if anyone's got any different opinions, I'd love to hear them. If anyone can explain to me how laying a plastic rod in a hole can effectively stop moisture from wicking up. Yeah, put, put that in the description. Uh, put that down in the comments. I'd love to know if someone could um, describe how that works because that smells seriously fishy and it's a very expensive um, piece of technology to have done. I'm actually thinking that what they do is create some sort of barrier above the ground on the outside of the wall and the inside of the wall rather than trying to I think there's something going on there anyway yeah just thought I would uh, yeah, add my tuppence um, anyway yeah just thought I'd um, give you a bit of background on the house uh, hope all is well thank you for all your comments keep them coming I love your comments I do get I do get a few and I try and uh, try and reply to all of them I read all of them and you'll get a little love heart if I've read and understood your comment and um, if you've been a bit a bit of a dick um, then I'll probably block you just to um, just to sort of add that <laughs> anyway see you later